The Calgary Flames are looking to address the dire situation for lack of center depth within the organization. And we're going to take a look at that on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Your Locked on Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Today, we're going to take a look at an article written by Eric Francis and kind of dissect it and, of course, share my opinions as well as take a look at the next draft and what could the Flames realistically give up if the player is the right player. And we are wrapping up the show with Anthony Mantha's 500th game tonight and, of course, players to watch ahead of the uh, NHL Frozen Frenzy slate tonight, 16 games, all 32 teams playing. Make sure you are subscribed to Lockdown Flames wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your Calgary Flames every day. So like I said, this article is written by Eric Francis. It is on Sportsnet, and I found this to be very interesting. And if you are new around here to the Flames or to the podcast, um, media literacy is like kind of like my thing. And Eric Francis often speaks for the team. He is, I don't want to say a mouthpiece because that feels kind of slighted, but I, he is one of the trusted sources that the Flames will go directly to rather than getting secondhand information. So this was published the 21st. So when was that? Monday. Uh, the Flames are looking for another center. They have been ever since they lost Elias Lindholm nine months ago. When we lost Lindholm, a right-handed center in your top six, that's kind of something you'd like to find. Is it an easy find? Probably not. Craig Conroy. Um, and he says that they've been talking about addressing this issue for a long, long time. And I think that even before Lindholm left, it it was an issue. I think that everyone kind of knew that Michael, ba obviously Michael Backlund's getting older. He's going to, he's not in this long-term plan. His plan <laughs> his playing time is coming to an end in the next couple of years, I would assume. Uh, Sean Monahan was traded, so you don't have him at center. Uh, you weren't able to get Sam Honzik to shift over to center. And you don't have a long-term fourth-line center. Um, you know, Kevin Rooney can play for probably another two year, two or three years, but like you need longevity. But right now they're focusing on that top six. And, you know, Pospisil has been playing uh, well with the other centers and, you know, that's going great, but it's still an issue that needs to be addressed. Conroy's top priority is to still find an age appropriate center, which he defines as being a player between 23 and 25 who has pro experience and someone who can be part of the long-term plan in Calgary. Someone who, who can be part, okay, I just read that, sorry. <laughs> Think Kirby Doc, six foot four, 221 pounds, 23, who shoots from the right side. I don't know why I thought Kirby Doc was older than that. Wow, I guess, I mean, drafted at 18, yeah. Okay, anyways, the question is what sort of assets the Flames would be willing to part for a middleman of any significance. Unless you have some injuries and needed something, sending a first round pick for a guy that would be here for a year doesn't make much sense, said the general manager, mindful of the rebuild afoot. But if it was a first round pick for a guy who would 
be here long term, we would be open to that. Centers are tough. It's a hard market. If you have them, you don't really want to give them up. So that's my job to look to see if it's out there. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. Um, I this The market for centers is tough because if you're going to want, like you need to draft a true 1C. I feel like that is the only way you're going to get uh, what you're looking for. Like I think of Anze Kopitar. I think of Patrice Bergeron. I, uh, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. Like those are the guys that immediately jump to mind when, uh, you know, I kind of think of that. So could you trade for one? Yes, absolutely. But if you're able to snag one in the draft, which, you know, hit or miss, um, you can do that that way. But let's see. Uh, the Flames had a, the Flames' desire to add a center came even more into focus when Cole Schwint was claimed off of waivers. Yeah, that hurt, Conroy said. Um, he was acquired in the Matthew Kachuk trade, of course, who would have likely been the first call up. We were hoping he would get through, but when he didn't, I wasn't overly surprised. As shocking as it may sound, Schwint was the only right hand center in the organization's pro ranks, making that a clear priority to better serve left wingers. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Um, that is a very glaring issue. No wonder the Flames had such, have such high hopes for Jaden Lipinski, a fourth-round pick, who is a hulking right-hand center playing in the WHL. You know, yeah, that's – and Sam Morton's there too, Sharon Govich, Zary, but, like, they need to do something. <laughs> and I don't know what is going to happen, and we're going to talk more about – you know, what's realistic coming up next. But I think right now the Flames, unless it is a very, like, no-brainer signing or trade, rather, focus on the in-house stuff, if you can. put I would say put a priority on that. Um, but like I said, we're going to talk about that more in a second. Sam Morton signed, was assigned, was Oh my gosh, Sam Morton signed as a free agent last year as a college hotshot from Minnesota State, Man Man Mancota, Cata, and was a uh, solid training camp. Karens, who, Rory Karens has been absolutely fantastic for the Wranglers, and I think that he deserves a shot uh, because he did not get any anything during training camp. But coming up next, we are going to talk more about. Uh, the Flames' wants, needs, and desires, and what they have that other teams might consider attractive. Coming up next on Locked on Flames. Well, Flames fans, you know that tonight is the Frozen Frenzy, where there are plenty of games going on, and FanDuel has everything you need to get your money's worth. Uh, you can start with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Maybe you place an 11-leg parlay. Maybe you're playing the money line. Maybe you're playing over-unders. Is Tyler Toffoli going to score an anytime goal tonight? I don't know. Is he? You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you are following me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. We spent a lot of the summer talking about draft capital and how the Flames can utilize it to their advantage and why it's important to, you know, stock up on your draft picks. And I think back to the defunct 
Arizona Coyotes a few years ago, probably four or five years ago at this point, where they had all those second round draft picks because they were a third, they were the third team involved in a trade, or you know, that's just what the asking price was. So the flames are on their way. And this isn't an overnight process. We have been through this before, uh, been over this a million times. It is not, the Flames can't fix what, like, Rome wasn't built in a day and the Flames rebuild is not going to happen in a single offseason. The Flames' main concern is obviously finding a strong top six center with a right-hand shot. We just went over it, but I think this is, this has been a glaring issue, I would say for at least as long as I've been covering the Flames. Um, so what's the, it's technically like five seasons, but like really like four-ish. Um, but, you know, obviously with the departures of players like Elias and Holm and, Sean Monahan, who was already struggling with injuries. So it was hard to consider him a reliable centerman, which stinks and is very difficult to say. But there were some big question marks around the team. And I think that that's fine. I mean, every team is going to have these moments. And for me, I'm glad it's this. <laughs> the The Flames have had so much going on that I'm glad that we have like one issue at hand. There's no more goaltending controversy. There's no more 15 pending free agents that are all requesting a trade after, you know, their coach uh, creates a very hostile work environment. Like there's none of that. There's none of that. We're just focusing on this. And I think that's great. I think it's, uh, you know, Obviously, there's a lot of different hands in the pots in the NHL, but like it's good for Craig Conroy to just have like this, this can be his passion project <laughs> for this season. And I wanted to kind of look at the, you know, what the Flames have for this year's draft, because what what could be most attractive to teams? Um, I got this information off of Puckpedia, so shout out to them. Uh, RIP cap friendly, uh, but Puckpedia is here to save the day. So in this year's draft, they have two firsts, two seconds, one third round pick, zero in the fourth, and then one in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. So far, I do not think it is worth giving up a first round pick unless this is someone that is Oh, the long-term vision. I just, I don't see it as worth it. Um, I personally think, like, your draft picks are your most valuable asset right now. You aren't necessarily bringing in star players through free agency. You're going to have to acquire them either through the draft or by trade. And if you are drafting them and you're able to turn them into something fantastic, that's like, that's what you want. That's why you have draft picks. But if you have the opportunity and you say you trade away a first and this guy's a bust, what good does that do you when the pick that you could have taken that draft pick, you know, ends up, I don't know, winning the Selkie? Like, it's a lot and you have to weigh your options. Is the center market right now worth truly putting all your eggs into one basket for? No, in my opinion. I think it is very slim pickings right now. He mentioned Kirby Doc. I don't know if Kirby Doc is looking to move again. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if he has like a no move or no trade clause. Uh, but I do think that. This does not need to be fixed immediately. Why? Well, you see, there's still a lot of the season left. And the Flames, while this is a glaring issue, it's not like the boat is sinking. 
without a 1C. We know what this team's goal is for this season and what the expectations are. This is not a Stanley Cup caliber team, nor is a 1C going to push them over the edge and make them a Stanley Stanley Cup contender. So would it be great to acquire one? Yes. But I think this is one of those situations where they need to wait until the time is right and they can absolutely get the right fit. Would it? Yes. Do they have time to kind of mess around and play around with like, okay, like if it's the wrong fit, like it's not the end of the world. Yes. However, you don't have that many draft picks to blow through. And it's not necessarily the route you want to take. You want to find your guy. And the Flames are very capable of doing that. If it takes two times, you know, sure. But I don't think you should just be throwing your first round picks around all willy nilly. And especially now and probably next year when you're projected to have a top seven five to seven draft pick so I think the Flames need to hold on to it until it's right I don't necessarily think they're like I don't know of a player that I'm like you know that's kind of being shopped around that could um you know I would be like first an immediate first yeah, Connor McDavid, sure, but like he's not being chopped around. <laughs> uh, I would say, you know, Dylan Cousins. We talked about him on the show last week. Absolutely not worth a first round pick. Buffalo should be giving you a first or second round pick for that contract if you trade for him, and regardless of who it is. So what what do you do? How do you navigate this? I think you just have to continually watch this market and not jump the gun. And we'll, as the season goes on, we'll probably start to see more and more uh, players potentially become available or kind of, uh, you know, fit them, weave certain players into our own narratives. Uh, to hopefully manifest them coming to Calgary. But in all seriousness, the plan for the Flames should remain the same, and that's don't jump the gun. But coming up next, we are going to wrap up the show celebrating Anthony Mantha's 500th game along with some players to watch ahead of tonight's matchup against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We are driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your hiring and matching platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to earn your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now to support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire. You need Indeed. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week. Your Calgary Flames every day. My goodness, Anthony Mantha has played 500 career games. I had fully convinced myself that Anthony Mantha was on the 
Stanley Cup championship uh, Washington Capitals team. But he is not. He was not. He was on the Red Wings at the time. Uh, but he, yes, he did play for the Red Wings and the Capitals and the Golden Knights. And most recently, obviously, the Calgary Flames. And I think Mantha is a great example of a player that, um, sure, he's been moved around a lot, but he doesn't like let that you know knock his confidence or anything. I, we know that he feeds off of emotions. And we saw that in his Flames debut. He got a Gordie Howe hat trick, uh, you know, sticking up for his teammate, Kevin Rooney. Um, and good for him. You know, I think that that's coming in and making a statement like that. That's pretty great. And, you know, I think tonight is going to be an emotional night, but not like, like, it'll be a good emotional, like, heck yeah, I've played a hundred, like 500 games. Like this is something to celebrate. And hopefully we celebrate by coming out on top against uh, the three and four Pittsburgh Penguins who just Healthy scratch their goaltender, Tristan Jari, I'm pretty sure is healthy scratched again tonight. Uh, I believe it is Nedeljkovic in net tonight for the Penguins. But what, other than celebrating Mantha's game, what uh, what can we watch for tonight? I think Martin Pospisil is, should be a focus of, I don't want to say concern, but, you know, he's someone to keep on your radar. I feel like he will need to be moved back to winger. I think that you're going to see the most productive Martin Pospisil on someone's wing rather than a center. Um, I don't know necessarily like the best defensive metrics or anything like that, but I, I guess I would just mainly watch his face-off wins. You know, how is he doing... Is he winning most of his face-offs? Is he losing them? What, like, are you seeing any sort of consistent struggles there? And what, what do his line mates look like? And he's playing alongside Huberto and Mantha. So again, two older veterans. So, uh, you know, seem to have a good start to the season. So is this something that continues or... Uh, are we going to see more of a shakeup down the line once players like Sharon Govich and Rooney come back into the lineup? I obviously, you know, Dustin Wolf is getting the start tonight at home again. He has not started any road games this season, so I think that the, that it's pretty neat that he's getting another start at home. Uh, I would like to see him on the road, of course, as well. I think that that's. Uh, an important factor here, but tonight, I guess I would just watch his uh, mechanics and see how he's doing. <laughs> um, just after it's been a quite a bit since he's played, and obviously, it's it's easy to very easy and. Uh, likely to build off of the momentum when you have games so close in succession. But now it's been a bit. It's been over a week since he's started. So what can we do to keep that rust off, keep him fresh, keep him ready and good to go? I also just think we should be watching Kevin Ball. And for me, that's personally because I feel like we find him out of position quite often, or not even out of position, but just pulling a 2023-24 Rasmus Anderson and being on another planet, not not being aware of uh, his surroundings or what the goal is, where the puck is, who, who he needs to be focused on. That's happened a few times already this season. And um, I'm just, I, I'm not necessarily a big fan of what I've been seeing. So let's keep an eye on that. <laughs> um, I'm also very curious to see how, uh, Huberto does, you know, he hasn't had a point in two games. So did he just get off to a heart hot, a hot start or is there something there? Points you know, points come and go. 
the streakiness happens to every player. Remember, there was a time where Kachuk went 18, 19 games without a point, and people were throwing a fit, rightfully so. Uh, so let's see where things land with him. I obviously would like to find him on the score sheet with a goal or a primary assist. I think that would be great. Um, and any sort of update on Sharon Govich would be great. I know that we're not going to get that on the ice, obviously, but I have not heard a single thing from team, from the team, from reporters, from anyone that like I talk to that is like in the Calgary Flames scene. I have not heard a single thing. And Conroy did rule out surgery early on, but have we seen a setback? Has something popped up? And it does make me question a few things, but that will do it for me here on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic evening. I am enjoying this last bit of warm weather. I heard that it is snowing in Calgary and I've seen pictures and I'm so sorry that the snow is already here, but have a great week and we'll be back tomorrow breaking down the game as well as, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly of the Calgary Flames hockey. <laughs> and uh, make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your Calgary Flames every day. I hope you have a great night and see you tomorrow.